A lot of new players keep on coming as the day goes by as they see the goodness of what Grand Blue Fantasy Reeling can offer to the table. I am receiving a lot of questions, especially from beginners, what a good character build means in this game, especially when it comes to damage gap mechanic. I'm the Samurai and I will be covering what are the fundamentals of a good build, especially when it comes to increasing your overall damage since it is easy to mess this one up. I will be explaining how damage cap works in depth, even provide more useful suggestions like things to avoid and other essential character building tips for you. Now starting off with damage cap mechanics. There are a lot of scenarios in this game or mindsets that makes you think you are helping yourself to get stronger but the reality is you are handicapping or even not knowingly making your character build bad. As a beginner, it is easy to fall into this trap and I experienced this in the past so, so hopefully this video will save you the hassle. First things first, we need to understand how damage cap works or know its mechanics since this is going to be your number one priority if you want to increase your overall damage, especially when you reach endgame. So as the name implies, damage cap determines the highest damage amount or ceiling that you can deal to your targets. So the higher your damage cap traits level, the more damage your character can output. To put it simply, regardless how much you increase your total attack power by equipping attack power sigils or other attack type sigils or even buffing your character with attack boosting skills, you will be dealing the same damage over and over. The one that I am showing on the screen right now is an example of a bad build. A build that focused on attack stats alone and did not bother equipping any damage cap sigils at all. But the next build that I am showing is a decent build that focuses on maxing the damage cap trait level for more damage. For demonstration purposes, I prepared a simple chart for you guys so you guys will have an idea how the damage cap works. Take the whole gauge on the screen as your total damage limiter. Notice that the red gauge is already at cap or it already reached the ceiling. To have more room or increase your damage ceiling, this is where you need to equip damage cap sigils. For instance, I have equipped more damage cap sigils and notice that the gauge or limiter is now longer and has room for more possible damage. In this case, you can now equip more attack boosting sigils such as the tyranny sigils or stamina sigils on the other hand which increases your attack in general. By equipping more attack boosting sigils, notice that the red gauge went close to the ceiling. And that's about it and I hope it gives a clear picture of how damage cap works and now let's move on to more useful tips. Now that we have understood how damage cap works, it is clear that you should prioritize it more than anything else, especially if you want to deal more damage. If you do have a limited sigil slots, you will know what to prioritize. Fastest way to get damage cap sigils. Of course, you will want to know where to get the most important sigil in the game and there are a lot of ways to get damage cap sigils and the fastest way is transmuting sigils in level 3 transmutations or transmarvels or from curio appraisals. But as you reach end game and you get stronger, the easiest way to farm damage cap 5 or 5 plus is the blazing trial proud difficulty quest which can also be auto farm easily and you can definitely get damage cap 5 plus in here which can bolster your build even further. Or there's another option where you can farm your final weapons in the game which is called the Proto Bahamut quest. This is the final quest and you cannot miss this as you progress in the proud difficulty. And while you are doing this, you are farming your terminus weapons also known as your final weapons in the game while also piling up or stocking up damage cap 5 plus sigils in the process. On to the next step and this is skill SBA normal attack damage caps. Your offensive skills. SBAs and normal attacks have their respective caps, meaning you can be capping on your normal attacks but not in terms of your offensive skills. So if you want to reach your skill damage cap, you can equip skilled assault sigils for instance. The next tip that I have here is over mastery recommendations. This tip is correlated to the previous tip which is about over mastery. Over mastery plays a significant role in increasing your damage caps. So it is suggested to aim for an increased skill, normal attack, and even SBA damage cap since they can go up to 20%. Moving on to the next step which is damage cap indicator. The next step on the list covers how to determine if you are reaching the damage cap. 
This is pretty useful tip since I didn't know this firsthand. In the past, what I usually do is to check the damage manually that I am dealing with to know if I am reaching the damage cap. If I am dealing the same damage numbers, that is where I know I already reached the cap. There is an easier way of knowing if you are hitting the cap. For instance, look closely at my damage here as it faintly glows after the numbers are shown on the screen. The glowing light is the key feature to know if you are hitting the cap. If the numbers glow, the game is telling you that you are hitting the cap already. But before the next step, if you are into straight to the point guides, tips and tricks like this one, subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button and it will tremendously help me a lot. Consider joining the Empire today and your support is greatly appreciated. Now on to the next step, which is replacing damage buff skills. So we have determined that damage cap is a thing in this game so when you reach late game and you are constantly hitting the damage cap without any kind of attack buff from skills, it is wise to just replace them with another skills that can actually help you in combat. Like for example, instead of the attack buff, you can use another offensive skill. Of course, this only applies to skills that only adds attack buff in the process and since other skills adds more different types of buffs like Rackham's while Gunsmoke, which allows him to have unlimited heat gauge, the user can still equip this skill and ignore the attack buff. The next tip is aiming for the right sigils aside from damage cap in the long run. There are a lot of sigils available in the game, however, the following sigils are the best overall to focus on increasing your overall damage and you will never be wrong chasing these. All of the sigils that I will be mentioning will be briefly explained as I made a dedicated video for them and let's start with Curio exclusive sigils first. Supplementary Damage Sigil Supplementary Damage Trade, as the name implies, adds a possible bonus attack on top of your regular attacks. The next one is War Elemental Sigil. This sigil gives the wearer a permanent ability to deal superior elements to targets, meaning that you will always be dealing elemental weaknesses to enemies and ultimately deal stronger damage in general. Glass Cannon Sigil is the third one. Glass Cannon trait adds 30% additional attack boost and 30% damage cap, but do be careful equipping this sigil as direct damage from enemies can inflict stun to your character. These three sigils can only be obtained from embracing curios and these are kind of rare. I'm just suggesting these as early as now so you will know what to aim for. Moving on to non-exclusive sigils. For non-exclusive sigils, the two most used currently when increasing damage are stamina sigils which increases attack depending on how the user's HP is and tyranny sigils which lower HP by 20% in exchange for more attack. Of course, these are just examples of the good sigils to aim for and there are tons of other selections in the game. Now, if you want to know how to get curios fast and get the stronger sigils in general or you want to know more about how these sigils works, click the video here and I will see you in the next one.